Hi, everybody. Dr. William Davis here, author of The Wheat Belly and more recently, Super Gut Books. I want to talk to you about an epidemic that's occurring right beneath our noses called small intestinal bacterial overgrowth, or we say SIBO, S-I-B-O. This is a situation permitted by our exposure to antibiotics and perhaps other factors like glyphosate in our food, other herbicides, pesticides, preservatives that kill microbes in food, but also in us, emulsifying agents like polysorbate 8 and carboxymethylcellulose in your ice cream and salad dressings, and numerous other factors. Well, those things have disrupted the composition of the gastrointestinal microbiome, but specifically have killed off beneficial species that were serving to suppress fecal microbes, that is, microbes that were meant to be confined to the colon, where these kinds of microbes are supposed to be. So we've lost the suppressive effects of beneficial microbes that have oddly allowed fecal microbes, these are species like E. coli, Klebsiella, Citrobacter, Campylobacter, Pseudomonas, and many others, to over-proliferate, because they're no longer suppressed by the good microbes, to over-proliferate and then ascend into the 24 feet of small intestine. Now, you might not even know this, or you might experience it as irritable bowel syndrome, that is bowel urgency and diarrhea and abdominal discomfort, or you might experience it as seborrhea, or psoriasis, or rosacea, or as cognitive impairment and dementia, or as Parkinson's disease, or as type 2 diabetes, or as abdominal fat, expansion of abdominal fat, or as high blood pressure, or as atrial fibrillation, or as coronary disease. In other words, all these common modern conditions are either initiated or worsened, exacerbated by this phenomenon. Well, how in the world do microbes confined to the small intestine exert these effects body-wide? Well, those fecal microbes only live for a few hours at a time. So you have trillions of microbes living in a 24 feet of small intestine, living and dying rapidly. When they die, they shed their components, but specifically one component called endotoxin or lipopolysaccharide endotoxin. Uh, and that endotoxin gains access to the bloodstream because the small intestine is very permeable. And that process of endotoxin filling the bloodstream is called endotoxemia. And that's how microbes in the small intestine export their effects to the brain, to the heart, to the skin, to other organs of the body. Uh, now, Telltale signs of this process of SIBO include such things as food intolerances. So all these people who say things like, I can only eat these seven foods, and I can't eat anything else, or uh, I have an intolerance to nightshades, or legumes, or fructose-containing foods, or FODMAPs, or histamine-containing food. Those are all versions of this, prob this problem, uh, SIBO. Or if you have conditions like irritable bowel syndrome, or fibromyalgia, or restless leg syndrome, or obesity, or type 2 diabetes, or prediabetes, there's a very high likelihood you have this problem. And so I bring this up now because it highlights the importance of microbes like Lactobacillus rotari and Lactobacillus gasseri. And there's some others, but those are two principal microbes that were supposed to to colonize your small intestine. They're among the very few microbes in the normal gastrointestinal microbiome that have the ability to colonize the small intestine where they take up residence and produce what are called bactericins. These are natural peptide antibiotics effective in killing fecal microbes. So the loss of rotari. So we know that, for instance, Lactobacillus rotari was ubiquitous about 40, 50 years ago. When it was first discovered, it was in everybody. It was in breast milk, it was in stool and other body fluids. And then over the ensuing 40, 50 years, it essentially disappeared. Very few people nowadays retain this microbe, Lactobacillus rotari. And I believe that is the reason why modern people, about one in two of us, about 160 million Americans, let me say that again, about 160 million Americans, and there's a rationale for why I say that. It's detailed in my super gut book, how we arrive at that number. But about 160 million people in this country, of course, more worldwide, have allowed fecal microbes to infest, to colonize a small intestine, likely largely due to the loss of beneficial small intestine colonizing species like Lactobacillus rotari, Lactobacillus gasseri, and some others. Well, 
getting lactobacillus roteri and gasseri also is the start of your effort to push back to reduce the numbers of fecal microbes that are invading your small intestine. It's such a very, very important phenomenon. So uh, I, I arrived at this conclusion by re simple logic. If you take a commercial probiotic, commercial probiotics for the most part, not all of them, but most of them, are nothing more than haphazard slapdash concoctions of microbes that have no relationship with each other, don't support each other, don't share metabolites, they're just, they're just thrown together. And so they don't really work all that well. They do help, but they don't really work all that well and certainly do not push back SIBO. If you took a commercial probiotic, say, with 20 different species, you're not likely to push back SIBO. You may reduce gas and bloating a little bit, but you're not going to get rid of the infestation of your small intestine by fecal microbes. So what if we chose species instead? that colonize the small intestine and produce bactericins. And we do so at high counts, not the small counts typical of a commercial probiotic, but tens to hundreds of billions of counts. And we're seeing this play out. We're seeing people get rid of their SIBO as evidenced by testing for hydrogen gas, which by the way, you can do in the comfort of your kitchen with this consumer device. You don't have to do this, but it's one of the options you have to get the AIR device, A-I-R-E, that's the original one, that measures hydrogen gas and methane on the breath. You blow into it. Here's the more recent one that measures hydrogen gas and methane for intestinal methanogen overgrowth. And it talks to your smartphone and your, you register a level of 0 to 10. Now, if this interests you in testing for SIBO, uh, take a look at my Super Gut book where I detail how to use this device.